arriving at New York City North Newark on the right. have to give this New York City North KOA double kudos for making you feel like you're way away from the city. They have all sorts of amenities, everything from you know the campground store to everything kids would want to do to a nice quiet campground. The spots are a little bit tight for a big rig. We're 40 foot towing a Honda Civic, but other than being a little bit tight, if you're careful, you can get in just fine. They have two pools, um, fishing pond. There was a lot of people fishing when we got here. Um, they give you free pancakes every day from 8 to 11. Just come up and ask for them. Tell them how many you want. The campgrounds are all in that direction. I just filled up with propane right there zoom in a little bit so you can see that there's the propane tank and there's our rig the bus tour to New York City I was not looking forward to but I was greatly impressed with that and that's a KOA thing the the tour guide that rode the bus with us was a KOA employee that used to live in New York so that was a nice offering I've loved everything about this campground Right, the bus driver showed up about 10 minutes ago and everybody was eager to get on the bus and get their seat and let's get this show on the road. So it'll be a great day to be up at the 86th floor uh, observation deck of the Empire State Building and then after that we'll make a brief stop in Times Square on our way out for you guys to uh, take some photos. <laughs> Once you have everything you need, once again, please have those tickets with you, and please follow me. Once we got on the ferry, we found out that you could buy food, drinks, and there were nice restrooms on there. The ride over only took about 15 minutes, so it wasn't very long at all. There were boats that ran about every 15 minutes to New York Island and then Ellis Island, and then back to the shore. <laughs> On uh, our boat tour, you can see the Washington Bridge, which is a beautiful bridge. You can see it in the distance. 
It's a double-decker suspension bridge and it spans the Hudson River. This used to be the longest spanning double-decker bridge in the world until 1937 when the Golden Gate Bridge was opened. The Empire State Building was one of the many stops we made on the bus tour. We stayed about an hour and a half to get in, get up, and take photos, get back down, and get out to the bus. So it took about an hour and a half to do the tour of the Empire State Building, but I think it was really worth it. Some of the facts we found out while we were there, the Empire State Building was constructed in a race to be the tallest building in the world. It was a means of supporting the uh, New York City area during the Depression, during and after. It helped insulate the New York City economy from the Depression. It was completed in 1931 at a height of 1,250 feet. It remained the tallest building until the first World Trade Center was built in 1970. The building was finished in record time. Designing, planning, and the construction of the building took just 20 months, less than two years, from start to finish. In 1945, a B-25 bomber pilot became disoriented due to the fog in the area and crashed into the 78th and 79th floors. Firefighters had those flames put out in just 40 minutes and the undamaged portions of the building were reopened just two days later.
shielded. It can be lightened up. south off of the higher state building. Look over to your left hand side, you'll see Times Square Tower right here. Right hand side, going right through Times Square now. It's named after Washington, so they named this one after Lincoln, uh, just to give it a more interesting name than the Midtown Vehicular Tunnel. But um, before the George Washington Bridge, uh, there, were, there were no connections uh, on land from uh, New Jersey uh, to New York. So if you wanted to get from Jersey to New York, you had to take a ferry. There was a ferry at Fort Lee, um, which, uh, for those who are more uh, familiar with the area, Fort Lee, New Jersey, um, is where now the George Washington Bridge is. It, it uh, connects Fort Lee, New Jersey, to Washington Heights. There's Upper Harlem uh, and Upper Manhattan. Uh, prior to the George Washington Bridge, which was completed in the early 1930s, um, there was a Fort Lee ferry, and if you wanted to take a land route uh, into Manhattan, you had to go uh, through the Bronx uh, and then into uh, Queens and take the 59th Street Bridge um, from Queens into the east side of Manhattan. So it was very inconvenient to get to the west side uh, with a vehicle. But of course, in those days, uh, there were ships coming into the, the west side. There wasn't, you know, there wasn't much going on on the west side that you would have to drive to. We're leaving our KOA in New York City. We've had a wonderful time here. I wish this was in Alabama. We would uh, stay at it more often. It's awesome. We've had a great time. We're gonna miss the place. It's just been a wonderful week. But now we're headed to Plymouth, Massachusetts and on to more fun and adventure. So we'll see you when we get to Massachusetts.